Lloyd, first break down the stake that Google took in a chat GPT rival, uh, Anthropic. Does it raise doubts about what Google is able to build itself organically? I thought it sort of already had its own chat GPT in-house. Yeah, it's a great question. It does seem a little bit odd given everything we've heard is that Google has the best technology out there. Uh, so I think it's largely just hedging their bets. You know, it's the other thing that, that struck us is they have been making investments in companies that migrate to the GCP uh, cloud business. So it may just be a way of ensuring that Anthropic runs on GCP uh, and, and the amount of money is peanuts for a company like Alphabet. Right. So maybe a defensive move then, I guess, is what you're kind of implying. Um, Lloyd, how do you ultimately monetize these tools? Um, I think you're saying that ChatGPT maybe poses a risk or generative AI poses a risk for Google in the short term because they may not be able to monetize it as well. Is it through licensing ultimately or can you still make advertising dollars off of such a product? Yeah, I think when you think about the industry as a whole, there's three ways you monetize. There's the models and licensing the models. They're building apps on top of the models. And then there's basically powering the models with a cloud platform. Uh, Google has a chance to participate in all three. Um, and then, of course, they are already using this technology to improve uh, the search on the advertising side. So they'll also monetize it that way. I think our, our near-term concern on Google is that they, they will have to push this out faster than they'd like because of competition which could be in the short term disruptive to monetization as it displaces ads on the page and then it's expensive to serve. Um, it uses a lot of compute resources. So those are our near term concerns, but the long term, uh, they could end up spinning out new businesses on the back of this. That's interesting. Yeah, we have heard about sort of concerns about operating margin if, they're, if their hand is forced to maybe move faster than they had planned. I have two questions, Lloyd. One is, um, is there anything externally through M&A you see them shopping for in this area, or is, is regulation just too intense at the moment? And do you expect uh, Sergey and Larry to move the needle internally on this stuff? Yeah, I think they're hamstrung on, on m and I think they, they are, um, there's so much scrutiny from the DOJ and FTC. I think that's not gonna be a, a, a valid strategy for them here or, or anywhere. In terms of Larry and Sergey, I think that the role they play in, in all these internal decisions is helping the company make bolder decisions and take more risk. They're the control shareholders. You know, you need their blessing, I think, to, to do things, particularly if things are disruptive to financials in the short term, you kind of want their sign off. And then look, these guys are legends. They've been through a lot of uh, transitions. They're good to have on, on mm -hmm. the team making, making these hard decisions. Lloyd, outside of the mega caps, Microsoft, Google, even Meta, what they're doing with artificial intelligence, um, are you seeing a bubble emerge? I mean, I take a look at a stock like C3 AI. It's up 150 percent this year. Has anything fundamentally changed? Have they always been sort of on the forefront here and now they're sort of being recognized for it? What do you think beyond the mega caps? Um, what are some good names here and what should investors also be a little bit cautious of? Yeah, so that, that name's outside of my coverage. I can't, I can't opine there. In terms of our explicit uh, coverage, there's, there's nothing that looks too frothy at the moment. I, you know, the press, the press coverage and, and, you know, there's clearly um, potential for that. But, you know, I think the, the best analogy we've heard is this is kind of like when the App Store came out uh, and the iPhone was introduced and you had a browser, a calendar, and an email app, and you didn't really know what was going to get built on the platform. It, it's that early. So, you know, I think it's a little bit um, premature to, to think that it's over overhyped. Uh, hmm. and yeah, I, that's that, wow. it's, it's just too early. Premature to think it's overhyped. Okay. Um, well, there's a lot of hype going on. Lloyd, thanks for your insights.